It is an oxymoron to practice fighting daily for decades in the name of peace. Still, Aikido means the way of harmonized life energy. And its practitioners assert that it is the only martial art whose purpose is to keep the attacker safe while defending oneself. Aikido is about self-defense, but it's also about developing yourself. It's about developing your internal energy, your internal fortitude, your internal uh, belief in yourself, confidence, a sense of self-confidence and self-awareness, a sense of being grounded, being connected to what's going on around you. The seminal figure in the development of Aikido is Morihei Ueshiba. He is called O-sensei, meaning great teacher, by the practitioners of his art. It is an honorific intended to acknowledge the impact of his vision upon the lives of his students and his efforts to translate a philosophy of love into martial movement. A traditional dojo such as Aikikai of Philadelphia begins each class with students seated in Seiza facing the Shomen, a Shinto-influenced shrine. Specifics of the opening ritual vary slightly from school to school, but they all function to pay homage to the creator of this martial art and to focus the students collectively on the cooperative task of exploring how to defuse the aggression of an attack until it comes to nothing. There is a protracted period of stretching at the outset of each class. This serves to prepare the joints of the body for the twisting and falling that occur when a student performs in the role of attacker. There is also enormous health benefit in this loosening of tendons and ligaments, stimulating the free flow of blood to the extremities. Recent scientific studies have indicated that as few as three controlled breaths can lower blood pressure noticeably. As it was explained to me, if you're going to hurt somebody, you have to be able to heal somebody. If inadvertently you get injured doing Aikido, just as you would get injured playing tennis or squash or doing pickup football, whatever you're doing, you have to be able to care for yourself. So it's a way of healing. And so o Sensei would say that Aikido is a path of purification, purifying yourself. It's a way of misogi, okay? It's Zen in motion. Good. Oh, for me, all good. Because I was, when I was little, I was a little overweight. I was like 20 pounds overweight at 8 years old, which is bad. So, starting that and then coming up, I am now, I've got more muscular sense. I've got more mental health with the posture, you know. And, you know, definitely, I'm definitely healthier. There have been a lot of times when I've dragged myself to class because I was tired or didn't feel like going. But then, as I was leaving, I was very glad that I did. <laughs> and probably for weight control and stress relief and a lot of other things is, is very positive. In the years directly following World War II, all martial arts were forbidden in Japan. Aikido survived through a combination of secret training sessions and the development of movement practiced without partner called Aiki Gymnastics or Aiki Taiso. This Qigong influenced movement system disguised Aikido as internal massage until the ban was lifted in 1948. The root of these exercises in all of Aikido is the gathering and focusing of life force called Ki in Japan, Chi in China, Prana in India, and identified by every culture on earth. The physical and aerobic challenges of Aikido remain integrated into the basic practice. Movements like Shiko, knee walking, strengthen the thigh muscles. The multiple push-ups and sit-ups that follow each fall quietly build biceps, shoulders, and abs. The repeated impact with the cushioned floor has been equated to the medicine ball work that is a staple of prize fighter training. The 
bulk of each class is spent alternately watching the instructor demonstrate a technique and then reproducing the same movements with a partner. Students of all levels practice together. In the United States Aikido Federation, America's largest Aikido organization, there are only white belts and black belts. This practice promotes an egalitarian atmosphere in keeping with the founding principles of Aikido. There are nuances of rank based upon mastery of specific groupings of technique and minimum numbers of practice days. White belts begin at 6Q, performing foundation movements like Ikkyo. They progress downward through 5th, 4th to 1st Q by executing increasingly more complex locks and throws. Yudansha, black belts, perform the same techniques but with the expectation of greater facility. First diamond, then bamboo, then water, then air. This system of matriculation was created by Yoshimitsu Yamada Shihan, a student selected specifically by O Sensei to introduce Aikido to America. Other sensei were sent like apostles to all the corners of the earth. So that a student entering a dojo anywhere is likely to experience the same ritual. One student crosses to another, bows, and says, Onegaishimas, I am ready to train. They then assume the roles of Nage or Tori, thrower, and Uke, attacker or receiver. Good. Good. That's better. That's better. Uke attacks in a forceful but exaggerated strike or grab. This makes it easier to practice without injury. Nage repeats the movements of the technique four times, and then both students exchange roles. As the partners get more confident in both roles, then the pace and the force of each throw increases. Ukemi is the art of receiving the technique. It could also be absorbing the technique, creating a void, so that the, the attack doesn't really exist anymore. You are like a black hole that absorbs all this force, okay? Instead of meeting the force head on, you transform the force into something else. The element of partnering has inspired significant criticism of Aikido as a practical martial art. The cooperation between practitioners that is intended to protect students from injury 
causes some observers to think of Aikido as contrived. The graceful blending movements that are guiding principles of I, harmony, often make practice resemble a dance as advanced students alter techniques to accommodate smaller or less skilled partners. You know, it's very easy to punch somebody in the face. It's very easy to kick somebody. It's very easy to put somebody in a stranglehold, especially if you're bigger and stronger. And I'm not, I'm not against all the other mixed martial arts, but it's harder to be able to, you know, try to restrain somebody and take them down without hurting them or without, you know, doing anything hard to the, harsh to them. So, and I think that's where Aikido gets a bad rap because we're not trying to do those things. The criticism seems to be inspired by a lack of understanding of the essential philosophy of both Aikido and Budo, the ancient warrior's code that connects all Japanese martial arts. Okay. Okay. Good point. Good point. Bai an you go, guard and protect all things, is a fundamental statement of purpose dating back at least to the samurai code of feudal Meiji era Japan. A warrior trains to master himself and thereby to be better able to avoid confrontation. Sun Tzu is considered perhaps to be the greatest martial mind in all of human history. Page after page of his seminal work, The Art of War, explores ways of avoiding battle because even the victor loses when there is armed confrontation. The practice in an Aikido dojo, with its emphasis on blending, avoiding clash, and maintaining an uninterrupted sense of calm in the face of threat, is a physicalization of the warrior's code. <laughs> Each of the previous techniques demonstrate how specific life lessons are taught through the practice of Aikido. Something as simple as move out of the way of an attack takes on subtle and profound significance after being performed 10,000 or 100,000 times. It's based on the sword, extension of the sword. The sword that, there's a sword that kills and the sword that gives life. A sword that takes life and a sword that gives life. So, in a sense, it's healing. It's a healing, it is a healing energy. It's purifying, how, what does that mean, purifying? Purify your body by de-stressing it, okay? By getting centered, instead of being, you know, upset or distracted by lots of different voices talking in your mind. <laughs> Trying to cut through all that, use the sword as a way to cut through all that crap to get to a point of realization where you can experience things, hear things, see things, sense things when a person enters the room. You develop that awareness as you do Aikido by sinking your center. It is universally acknowledged that training with the sword and bayonet were major influences on Aikido founder Morihei Ueshiba as he labored to distinguish his new art from its roots in Daito Ru. The exercises and katas practiced in contemporary dojos primarily are a means to explore the movements that became refined as open hand technique. The main stance, with hands extended and open, is sometimes described as the invisible sword. A lot of people go into the dojo and they say, oh, I want to, I want to, I, I want to, be able to do this in the street and you really in the end you don't want to do anything in the street except avoid attack okay avoid confrontation there's too many opportunities for confrontation in life so uh, of course i've been attacked in my life a couple of times and 
once the person came and I just gave way and the person went over and hurt it and it landed on the side of his head. Well, I think it's, it's basically not clashing directly with force to blend with it and turn it back on itself. But I think it's cool because also you kind of, as a girl, you kind of also get to kind of sit your ground a little bit more. <laughs> like, uh, like, yeah, you have you guys kind of all around. As a girl, like me, I'm kind of all set and ready to kind of, I kind of work on more of my macho-ness or something. <laughs> In a sense, you know, kind of just like, it's good because, you know, while you're out walking the street, you're going to have some big tough guy come at you. So for me, also, it's good practice because, you know, you have big tough guy come out through some all. Ready to go. It's it's much easier to say, I understand what your honor is saying, however, have you considered than that's crazy, Judge, or you can't do that, Judge. I think Tohei Sensei talked a lot about that in the seventies. Uchi Tohei. And I think that he was one of the most important proponents, propagators of the art, and how it applies to daily life. We already talked about the health benefits. You have to stay fit, you have to get grounded, you have to get focused, you're not stressed out about things. Um, you can apply it to all your the work that you're doing. It gets you more, you, I think you can accomplish a lot more. You have more energy to go, you know, to do things in life. Those are definite uh, applications. Conflict resolution, the whole movement grew out of Aikido. Ultimately, Aikido is intended to refine a practitioner's ability to recognize a dangerous situation as it is unfolding, and to have enough self-confidence to walk away. When there is absolutely no escaping the conflict, then... Randori is an improvised response to unscripted attacks. It is the closest students come to recreating a real encounter. It is also the most potentially dangerous event in an Aikido practice. One Aikido Ka will face as many as six adversaries simultaneously. Each can attack at any time and in any of more than one dozen strikes and grabs. So you're surrounded by your opponents and you have to not get stuck with this opponent here because somebody's attacking you from behind so then you move. In the, in the Tai Sabaki, the footwork in Aikido, you're constantly moving to see everything going on around you, peripherally. Not just what's in front of you, not just what you can see visually, but what you can sense and feel. So, Eight Directions is a way of developing that, and Randori, which is a Judo, kind of borrowed from Judo, free, uh, freestyle attack, okay, um, where three or four or five or six people attack you at the same time, uh, is seeing all those people as one. Now, how that same seems weird. How can you see six people as one? But you, uh, there is a sign of a sense of a rhythm of, of energy of attack. There's a sense of moving and changing and, you know, like I said, just moving through the whole sequence of the eight directions. Nothing demonstrates the philosophy of Aikido more clearly than this practice of moving through a malevolent crowd without returning anger and dispatching each assailant simply by redirecting his energy. This compassionate approach to confrontation, relying upon movement rather than muscle, has made Aikido the fastest growing martial art in the world with an equal appeal to men and women. son, when he was in high school, took a night course, I think it was eight weeks, and I pulled into a karate parking lot, and he said, no, I don't want to do karate, I want to do Aikido, and I said, well, it's all the same, karate, Aikido, and he said, no, I want to do Aikido, so I took him to the dojo that had been teaching the course, and signed him up, and while I was at it, I signed myself up. Um, I had never seen a class, as I said, I thought it was the same as karate. Uh, if I had seen a class, I may not have signed up, <laughs> but I'm glad I did. Okay, actually, um, it started back in college. Um, I ran track in college, and once I got done, um, my I had like a, a, a couple a semester left, 
And one of the professors that I would looked up to was saying, you know, why don't you try Aikido? And I was interested in the martial arts, and back then I watched like Jackie Chan movies yeah. and stuff, you know, and everything. So I was thinking like the Wu Tang Clan, Shaolin versus the Wu Tang or something. And he was like, well, Aikido's a little different. But I, I didn't even have intentions on starting Aikido. I was gonna start tap dance that by the next door. But then something, one thing led to another, and I was sitting there watching it, and I was just fascinated with it. And I started the next the week after. And ever since that has been going, even like days when I was sick, or days when I was hurt, I kind of complained to my mom I wanted to go, like, I want to go, you're hurt, you're sick. <laughs> but, I don't know, I, I always liked it, I always liked the movement, the flowing, and the energy. Like, when I was little, I just like playing around, but the more older I got, the more I realized the meditation and the structure that it gives you as a child going to, uh, you know, adulthood. I, harmony, key, life force, spirit, energy, the way of doing that, the way of joining that. I, key, do, the way of spirit harmony, the art of peace. It, it really was a modality for not only getting fit and getting Connected, connecting your mind and your body, not just physical activity that you would do going to a gym or going to a sports club, but it was engaging the mind as well. And blending it together created a certain kind of power that you can't really explain. Why I see it that way is because that principle carries over into daily life. Instead of clashing directly, maybe yield a little bit and then turn an argument back on itself and so I think that a lot of the principles of training apply in daily life. With work and stuff sometimes it gets a little hectic so you know you sit and you just breathe, relax and then take care of a certain problem or obstacle. So I definitely find myself doing a lot more meditating and breathing exercises. And the other little part to it is, and I like a lot of parts of the story is, that um, I was studying Japanese art as well. So I actually did a paper, I'm an engineer, so I did a paper on um, science and technology, how the Japanese sword actually, as a science, was so novel, but as a, um, and, but as a, and as a technology was so novel, but how it actually influenced the society. Um, so, learning about the Japanese culture and then knowing that Aikido came from the Japanese culture and came from the sword, I said, well, let me try it. 